Hi friends, I'm Matatop from Easy Approach and it's the 36th video of Flutter video series. In the last video, we have done user authentication with email and password using Firebase and in this video, we are going to do user authentication using mobile number by sending the code to the device and then user has to write that receive code as a password and if that matches, user would get logged in. But first of all, let's see the project structure and the screens that I have designed already to save the time. So basically, I have created a screens package inside the lib directory in which I have all the screens of the application. So the first screen of the application is this home screen, which we will show the user once we verified the user. And it's just showing the phone number of the user. And then we have the login screen by which the user can log in. But you might be thinking that where is the registration screen? If so, then the answer is when the user logs in first time using mobile authentication, Firebase after verification register himself that user in the authentication data. But if the user logs in not for the first time, it just do the verification by sending the message. So we don't really need to have registration screen as Firebase register the user himself. Now let's take a look at the design of this login screen. First of all, I have a scaffold widget and inside it, I have single child scroll view, which is to make the content scrollable and to avoid the overflow. And inside it, I have a container so that I can apply some padding and inside it, I have a form and in the form, I just want, I have a one label, uh, a kind of, kind of label and I have a text form field, which we will use uh, to take input from the user, his form number and at the last, I have a flat button on which we will trigger the event of registration. So that's it from the project structure and the design. That's a, it's quite simple design. And now we can move to the real programming. So now let's make things real. But before moving on, you must need to integrate Firebase with your Flutter application. And if you haven't already done that, then you need to uh, watch my 34th video uh, so that you can easily integrate Firebase with Flutter application. And then you can come back to this part and you can continue the video from, from where you left off. So that's all good. And now we can continue the programming things. So first of all, let's make uh, a future inside the login screen, uh, which we'll use to log in or register the user in Firebase. So let's make a future. And for now, just uh, write here a bool as a return type. And you can name anything like login uh, user. And you need to use here async since we'll be using a wait keyword inside this feature. So now let's uh, first make the instance of Firebase authentication. So you can write here Firebase auth and you can give any name. And you can initialize it by using Firebase or dot instance. And now you can use all the features provided by Firebase in order to communicate with Firebase authentication. So the future that we are going to use in order to register or log in the user using mobile phone number is verify phone number. And inside it, we have different properties that we must need to define. So the first property inside this verify phone number, which is actually the phone number, is actually the user mobile number which you want to verify so we have to give here the user mobile number and this timeout is actually the time after which the code sent to the device uh, would get expired so we have to give here the timeout as well and this verification completed is a callback which gets called once the verification is completely uh, happened successfully and this verification fail is also a callback uh, which is called when uh, the verification is failed and this code sent, which is another callback, gets called once the code is sent successfully to the user device. And now at the last, this is uh, another callback called auto retrieval timeout when the timeout uh, occur for the auto code retrieval. But what the auto code retrieval is? You might have seen in some applications like in Uber, when the user receives some verification code on the device, the user not really need to write that code in the application because the application automatically detects the code. So that's the feature that is called code auto retrieval. And luckily Firebase support that auto code retrieval feature. But there's some certain time defined by Firebase for the code auto retrieval. But once the time is finished, this callback gets called. 
So that is all good. We have covered every call, every property of this verify phone number, and now we can define these properties. So let's first give the phone number property. For this, I'm writing, I'm defining here a parameter, a string phone, so that we can pass phone number when we call this feature, and you can just write here phone. And now in the timeout, you can give duration, and it's better to give at least 60 seconds. So this is it we have done with phone number and timeout. And now we can give these callbacks. So first of all, let's give this a uh, verification completed callback. And inside the verification completed callback, we receive from Firebase auth credential, uh, which we can use to sign into the user account. So just write here auth credential and you can give any name and inside it, you can use it for signing in. But before moving on, I must need to tell you that this verification completed callback would only gets called when the verification is done using auto code retrieval, not manually. So just keep in mind. And now let's move forward and use this credential uh, to sign signing into the user account. So the feature that we are going to use in order to uh, signing into the user account using credential is actually sign in with credentials. So here it is. And now you have to give the credential. So this would return you auth result. So you can save it in auth result. So that is authentication result. And as it is a future, you need to use here await. And since you are using here await, you need to use here async as well. So this is all good. And now you need to get the currently logged in user. So you can get it by writing here Firebase user. And you can write here anything user. And you can get the user by authentication result, result.user. And now what we need to do, we need to pass this user uh, in the home screen so that we can show the information of the user like phone number. So you can write here if user is not equal to null. So you can navi use the navigator dot off. You can just pass here context. And here you need to give, uh, so we need to have the context here as well. So we can use here another parameter for the context. So you can write here build context. And you can just write here context. And now we need to give him material page root. And inside it, we have a builder, and we can use here context again. And we can return the home screen which you want to go. So in the home screen, there's one property that we know that we must need to define. It's actually the Firebase user, and we have already gotten that. So you can just pass this. So this is all good. We have done uh, the first part, which is actually uh, the code auto retrieval thing. So uh, this callback, as I said, this callback would only get called uh, when the verification is done automatically uh, by uh, auto code retrieval. And now we have to define this verification fail callback. So as I said, this verification failed is a callback which gets called once the verification uh, is failed. Uh, like if the user has given some wrong number or he has given the wrong code uh, that he received actually. So it act oh, you actually uh, get here authentication exception. So for now, I'm just printing it on console, but you can rather uh, <laughs> print F, it's actually of C. But you can rather but you can rather use it to indicate or to acknowledge the user as well but for now just uh, i'm printing here on the console and now the most important or interesting thing is this code sent as i said already this code sent callback uh, would get called when the code is sent to the user device but what happens sometimes in some devices or in some cases the auto code retrieval feature uh, doesn't work and in that case, you need to manually ask user to input the code he received. And then you need to manually make this auth credential object that you haven't made uh, uh, yourself in the verification completed uh, callback. So you need to manually make this object and then you need to use this to signing in and then you can navigate to the home screen. So actually, uh, if, if in the summary, this uh, verification completed callback gets called when the verification is happened automatically using auto code retrieval. But if that, uh, but if it, it is failed, then you need to define all the manual uh, procedure of the verification. So uh, you have to show here some dialog box inside this code sent, and then you need to make this object, uh, this credential object, and then you would sign in and navigate to the home screen. So let's define this code send callback. So the first thing that we receive in this callback is the string verification ID that is generated by Firebase against every code sent to the device. 
we will use this to make auth credential later and the second thing that we receive is the force resending token so this token can be used if you want to resend the, the code to the device uh, but we will not use this and now we need to show uh, the dialog box so that user can give the code that he received so you can use here show dialog and let's give some property in the context just pass the context and in barrier dismissible let's give some uh, let's get false and in the builder we need to first write here context and now we need to return the alert box sorry the alert dialog actually and now inside the alert dialog in the content or in the title let's first give give the code so that user can know And in the content, uh, let's make a text field. So first, let's make a column widget. Um, okay, let's make it. And inside it, uh, just write here text field. And you can associate a controller so that we can get the text from it. So let's make here the code controller text editing controller and now we can associate this tech code controller with this text field so that we can get the text from it and uh, we need to make a, a button as well here or we we can do it using actions let's make a button here let button and let's give some text and you need to define on press as well so that's all good we have showed the uh, dialog box and we have taken the input from the user and now we have to make the auth credential object and you can make the auth credential object using verification id and the code that is uh, uh, that is uh, given by the user so let's make auth credential object and you can name anything like uh, just credential and you can make it using phone auth provider and let's use get credential and you have to give here the verification id so you have already uh, got the verification id here you can just use it and now you have to give the user code that he has uh, uh, given using this code uh, this text field so you can just use here a uh, code controller dot tags or we can make a variable here final code and you can use a uh, code controller that tags and it's better to use trim as it removes all the white spaces and now you can just use your code so this is it we have uh, made the credential object again which we have received uh, automatically in the case of verification completed and now we can do the same thing we can use uh, uh, this uh, we can sign in first using this sign in uh, with credential and now we can proceed uh, to the next thing so now let's sign in using this credential so you can use auth dot sign in with credentials and you can pass this credential and in the in the res in the previous case uh, it returns auth result so you can make an auth result object and let's give any name and you have to use your await since it's a future and you need to use your async as you are using await inside it and now what we need to do we first need to get the uh, uh, we, we first need to get the user so you can get it by result so first let's make a variable and give some name and now you can use result.user like we did in the case of uh, verification completed callback and now we need to check if the user is not null 
we can write the so same code i can just copy it and let's wait just paste it here and it's better to uh, define here else as well so that we can see if there is some error so you can write here just error came here so this is good i think we have uh, done everything but there is one thing that i need to tell you that this code send callback would be the first callback that gets called inside this uh, verify phone number because uh, for the verification complete completion uh, it, it is necessary that the user has received the code so logically this code send would be the first that gets called so the show dialog would be uh, what user can see even if the auto code retrieval works so it's obvious when this verification completed callback would get called the dialog box would be already on a screen since code sent will be called before this verification completed so we need to dismiss this dialog box uh, when we come this in this verification completed because uh, uh, we have verified already the user automatically so what we need to do we can use here inside uh, this verification completed we can just add one line navigator dot off and you can just use pop so this would dismiss uh, the dialog box uh, since uh, we are uh, we have already verified the user using auto auto code retrieval so that's all good and now we need to run this application or sorry we haven't called the login screen future here so what we need to do we need to use here login future so mostly we need to get the number so you can get the phone number uh, using phone controller i think yeah and now we need to use trim it's better to use trim and we can just call login a screen sorry login user and now firstly we need to pass the phone and now we need to give the context and that's all we need so this is good and now we can run this application since uh this required a uh, sim or uh some uh, service uh, some uh, service provider or network provider so what we need to do uh we can't run it on emulator so i'm using visor for that so and i'm running on my a personal or physical device so i have connected my device with visor and now let's run the application and let's open the console as well so that we can see if uh, there is some uh, some error So you can see the application is running and now we have to give uh, uh, my mobile number and now let's click on login so you can see here it's asking for the code and I haven't received the code yet. And now you can see we have successfully logged in because we haven't showed any sort of message uh, when we receive the code or uh, when we have uh, given the code. So this is it. Uh, we have successfully uh, logged into uh, the screen, the, to the home screen. So now let's uh, uh, take a look at the Firebus console uh, so that we can see uh, what sort of uh, uh, things there in the data. So if I open the Firebase console uh, by which I have connected my Fire Flutter application. So if you go in the authentication, you can see my entry and you can see uh, this, the latest sign in date is January 20, which is today's date. So, and there's one thing that I've missed uh, uh, before running the application, you need to make sure that you enable this phone verification sign in method. So let's uh, just click on that and you can enable or disable it by here. And this is it from this video. In this video, we have learned uh, mobile phone verification using Firebase. And in the next video, we'll learn some different topic with Firebase and Flutter. So thank you for watching.